Hey everybody, Michael Bovey with Consumer Recovery Network, and I'm back to talk a little bit more, in actually great detail, about prioritizing the accounts that you settle with first, second, third, fourth. I've got an article about that that you can go visit. Um, you can see the link on the screen. So first you determine that settlement's right for you, okay? Once you do that, if you've just got one account, there's no prioritization, you just get started. If you have more than one account, it suddenly becomes a little bit more important to determine if you only have enough money to do one at a time, why you choose one over the next one. Some of the formula that goes into determining that is your cash flow and when you'll have enough to do the second one. It also determine, is determined by how late are you on a specific account. For example, let's say you have three accounts and you're super late on one and barely late on the other two. Well then the one that's the latest will often get the attention first because the other accounts have to be more often than not up to five months late on credit cards, four months late on fixed loans, sometimes even later, depending on the creditor. Not to make this all sound complicated, it's just that in order to utilize your money to do one of two things, get the most available bang for the dollar that you have. In other words, settle a debt for the most savings. And two, how to avert risk or avoid any lawsuit, okay? Most of us don't want to get sued, and if there's a way to avoid it, and there normally is, then you follow that path, okay? Uh, let's say it's all credit card debt, and you're dealing with, and I'll just make this up randomly, let's say you're dealing with Discover, um, Citibank, and Chase, okay? Well, in this example, Discover is probably the more aggressive right after charge-off. Charge-off is when you're six months late. It's an accounting principle they have to follow. They don't have a choice. Most banks tie their collection policies and procedures to that charge-off event. So six months into being late on all three of these creditors, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to charge the account off. But they're not going to do the exact same thing when it comes to who they're going to send the account to for collection. Discover typically will engage attorneys quicker than anybody else in this example. Citibank doesn't use a lot of attorneys historically, sure, but currently, no. Where your risk lies with Citibank is more when they sell your account off to the four different debt buyers that they sell to, uh, the big ones. They sell to PRA, Midland Funding, uh, Calvary, um, uh, Unifund sometimes, right? But Synchrony, same, same thing, sells to those same places, and that's where your risk is. But we're talking more about um, Chase next. And Chase, okay, so Chase currently, at the time I'm recording this, they're kind of hot and cold. They didn't sue anybody, anybody from 2011 to late 2019, and then they started placing a select amount of accounts with law firms for collection, and part of that is authorization to sue. But they kind of cooled off because of COVID, and now I see them ramping that back up again, and then slowing it back down, and then ramping it back up again, and I'm recording this in mid-November of 2021, and I'm starting to see that ramp back up again. So in this example of these three is, okay, what is your cash flow? How late are you? Are you three months late and you can save up more so that you can deal with Discover and potentially one of the other creditors at the same time? Or are there other you know, things that are going to impact your savings long-term? What are these balances? These are the kind of things that you, the value I can help provide you in, and it's a free consult, so there's no cost, certainly value. Um, and we'll get to the bottom of what your plan should be. But it's also the case that, and this is my main point for recording this video, is that you can do more than one settlement at a time. The fact is that if you've got enough money to save up every month and you're six months late on all three of these and you already had a little bit saved up from the months that you weren't making your minimums or you got your tax refund or a work bonus or maybe your mom stepped up and lent you 1500 bucks to get a head start on these. You can use that money intelligently all in a narrow window of time to Knock out one, maybe lump sum, because the difference between settling for a lump sum and or getting payment terms, you save more with a lump sum. But the other two, let's say one goes to a debt buyer and one goes to a collection agency and after charge off, they're not precluded from giving you decent payment terms. Let's say Chase lets you pay the settlement over 12 months, they do. Let's say Citibank, one of the debt buyers they sell to, lets you settle that over 18 months, that happens, right? So suddenly, you're, you're done settling with everybody at the sixth or seventh month mark, but you're just not done paying for it. The benefit to approaching it this way is one, 
They all think they're the first one to get your money and you can usually optimize your savings. And two, you're not looking over your shoulder anymore for, oh my gosh, that one's still hanging out there and I'm hearing from debt collectors. All that stops because you have an agreement and you're performing your payments, your monthly payments on those agreements. It also means you're not getting sued. So you just remove all the risk. Prioritization of your creditors is key to your success. And one of the problems with my industry at large is there's not a lot of intelligent design to some of the settlement plans they build. Money in, accumulate, settle. Money in, accumulate, settle. Ignoring the fact that some creditors like American Express, like Discover, like Capital One, although less now than in years past, like their local credit union. Some of these places are more apt to sue in the early part of you being delinquent and waiting longer to settle those guys makes absolutely no sense. So prioritization is key to your success and then being able to do more than one debt at a time when you're not gonna overcommit yourself is the second ingredient to your debt settlement success. Again, you can schedule time with me. I can answer your questions in the comments to talk through what a strategy would look like in your specific set of circumstances. Remember to like and subscribe to our video channel. See you next time.